welcome to the third tutorial of our series where I'm going to show you how at least I would approach the design of a parametric wall. Right, so first thing, first things first, very important to note, the software that we're using to design this wall is not important. You can do it just by modeling in Rhino, you can do it by doing it uh, by creating it in Grasshopper, in Blender, whatever. I don't care, right? So the technique that I'm going to show you is going to be one of the million different techniques. It's just, you know, to kind of showcase my thought process as I go through it. So the first thing that I will start with is just in pure Rhino without Grasshopper at all. I will create... Uh, like a bounding box for myself to know the size of the of the wall and also i'm going to have it laying flat uh, on the ground right uh, rather than being vertical just because i don't know visually for me it's easier to um, work with something that is horizontal rather than vertical so the wall that we're going to be doing is going to be made out of segments, right? So these segments are going to be 300 by 300 millimeters and 100 millimeters in height. 300, 300, 100. That is our segment. And as I told you during the previous tutorials, uh, we will have uh, three segments along the length. Uh, yeah. And six segments along the height right and also the wall is going to be double-sided so we will have two segments in uh, well let's say this is width this is length and this is a height right so two segments in height this is our arrangement so in total we will have 36 elements right for the wall wait six times three No, I'm, I'm, I'm stupid, sorry. We need more, we need more, more. <laughs> so we will do two more here. So eight segments in height, like that. That's a much better looking wall. Okay, so how many elements do we have in total? 48, 48 elements in total. And it's gonna look like this and i'm not explaining you know the every single keystroke that i do because i think you know cr creating a bunch of boxes is simple enough i i, I trust that you will figure it out <laughs> so that's going to be our kind of wall enough of that let's delete it and let's just create a rectangle going along the or following the bottom perimeter of the wall select everything except for the rectangle so holding the, down the control key i'll unselect the rectangle and delete everything else so these are the bounds in which we're going to be working three times 30 centimeters is 90 centimeters here and 2.4 meters here okay so as I said before, uh, I'll start by doing this manually and then I will show you how I would automate it, kinda, in Grasshopper. So I need to decide on a style, on an aesthetic, and for that I would probably just kinda computational design wall, right? <laughs> just Google that and go through the examples and maybe get some inspiration. Um, from these examples and honestly yeah that, that that that's whatever you know all all of those those walls are cool and all but i want to do my own thing so i will not be looking at references at all um what kind of approach do you want perhaps a grid well grid by by saying grid i don't mean you know vertical horizontal lines but i mean some sort of a distorted grid so i'll create um maybe two layers layer one is going to be construct a layer two is going to be construct b right a and b 
for construct A, I will choose red color. For construct B, I will choose blue color. This will correspond to um, the directions within the grid. So let's decide on, well, first of all, the first direction and how it changes. I will do something very simple from that, from there to there. Um, and maybe it crosses it, some, something like that. That's my construct A, and that's my, how I want my grid to be aligned in one direction. And for my construct B layer, I will just do, do it something like so. Perhaps that, and then it does the thing here, and then maybe it keeps expanding here. Something like that, right? So now, what about it? We drew a bunch of lines. Well, there is this tool called, um, f no, not flow, tween. Tween curves, tween curves tool, which asks me to give it start and end curves. Sure, this one and this one. And as you can see, as I select these two curves, it generates a bunch of curves in between. Ah, things are starting to get interesting. So I'm going to do like six in between these two and hit enter. And then six more between these two and hit enter. Right? So with tween, we have one direction of curves. I think this one should be a little bit longer for, for, for this to work. And maybe this one should be a little bit more dramatic. Sorry, now I'm, I'm starting to design instead of explain, <laughs> but it is just, I, I can't, um, I cannot not do that. Needs to be aesthetic. Very important. Okay, so now we jump to construct A and we do the tween as well. Tween curves from here to here, enter, and then again from here to here, enter. We have ourselves a grid that is in, inside of, of our rectangle. And I'm going to, for this example, I'm going to keep them uh, not curved, but they can be curved. Or maybe I should make them curved. Okay, let's make them curved. Undo. I'll just grab the, 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 the middle ones and only curve those. Uh, rebuild. That's not how you write rebuild. Rebuild. There we go. Uh, let's give it four points. <clears throat> so I have those two curves selected and I rebuild them with four points. Uh, let's do like six points rather. Degree three. That's fine. Hit OK. And now as you select one of them, you have control points that you can mess around with. Right? So I'm just going to say... Uh, just bring it in here make it curve, bring it back in here. That's fine. Let's make it into a stomach. Okay, so we have this kind of curvy boy here. Uh, this one needs to be extended. Is this, that, that seems fine. And now for this one, same procedure, only you know in different orientation, uh, something like that maybe. Yeah, I think something like that will work. Okay, tween again. And let's do um, like the, 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 the six curves in between is a little bit too much. Let's do five. Oops, and we need to work in the correct layer. There we go. Tween curves, enter. There we go. Now change the layer, repeat. And the final one is here. There we go. Okay. So we have ourselves like change in density and so on, and a pretty nice pattern. Let's clean it up and just see how it looks like. Uh, I'll just, uh, I'm, I just made a copy and I'm going to trim it away just to, just to see how, how nicely does it actually frame in our rectangle. And it seems to be a pretty decent, um, yeah, seems to be okay. Nothing too fancy, but 
good enough. So now uh, we need uh, we need to somehow make it three dimensional, right? So there are multiple ways of how I can do this. The fastest one, perhaps, would be to uh, well, let's let's use let's just work on the blue ones for now. So the fastest one would be to construct some sort of a three-dimensional shape along all of these curves. And there is multiple ways of how you can do it. Right? The one that I kind of want to test out is going to be sweep. Right? I think we can do a sweep. So let's try... Um, Let's try a rectangle, a rectangle, a round curve, select the curve, select the end point. Okay, so this is how it makes the rectangle. This is not what I want. I kind of want it to be um, rotated 90 degrees. So I'm thinking, what if we do a polygon instead? Around curve. Oops, sorry. Polygon instead. Number of sides. Um, let's try it with, um, a, with a hexagon. Six sides. Six-sided polygon. Mode inscribed, edge, star, vertical. And let's do a round curve, right? So we select the curve. We do... Uh, 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 a hexagon around it. We hold down the shift key. So when you hold down the shift key, it will go along the X, Y, Z directions, right? And I can kind of uh, type in what kind of radius I want, right? So I can just type in um, if our wall is 200 millimeters high, then let's let's say that's the radius, right? So I will do uh, let's 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 be safe. Let's do ninety millimeters in height, so one hundred and eighty in diameter, and straight up. And this is our setup. Now with this, we can just kind of sweep it, sweep, uh, sweep one from here. Uh, this is the rail. Sweep one. Select rail. Select cross section curves. Hit enter. Enter again. Voila, we did a freaking pipe. <laughs> Congratulations. So we need to do this for, uh, do, do this kind of a hexagon for every one of these curves, right? So I'm going to be fast about it. Okay, there we go. So this is how it looks like now. And let's uh, let's just check what we will get by sweeping it. So I'll keep uh, sweeps, sweeps. Uh, I'll keep this, uh, this part recorded. <laughs> I'll record this part because you'll see how the, the structure starts appearing, right? So new layer sweeps, and then we just do sweep one rail, uh, section, enter, enter, enter. Repeat. One, two, enter, enter, enter. One, two, oops. One, two, enter, enter, enter. One, two, enter, 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 and so on. So chill out and look at me work. So 
So the reason why I'm showing you all of this instead of doing it immediately in Grasshopper is to show that repetitive tasks are better, uh, are easier to do in Grasshopper rather than in Rhino. So first I'm going to do this kind of repetitive, quite repetitive modeling in Rhino. And then I'll show you how to do a similar thing in Grasshopper with some uh, bonus cool stuff. So that's one direction. And I'll call it uh, sweeps2. Make that active, hide this, uh, hide the blue ones as well so that they're not in the way. And again, sweeps. Select rail, this, enter, enter, enter. Rail, this, enter, enter, enter. So by the way, I'm hitting enter one more time uh, because when you don't have any commands running and you hit enter, it just repeats the last command you used. And the last command I used, you guessed it, that was the sweep, right? So I can, oops, messed that one up. Uh, I can use the sweep tool to, or sorry, I can use enter to kind of keep repeating the, 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 the sweep tool. There we go. So enter and then to, to, to repeat the tool. Okay, and that's the last one. So those are my sweeps. Both of them. Uh, wait, both of them. There we go. And that's the geometry that I currently have. Okay, um, let's hide all of the curves except for the, the, the actual sweeps. And uh, there should be like a constructor curve here somewhere. There, there it is. This bad boy right here. We now are going to cut away everything except for sorry we're now going to remove all of the unnecessary bits and just leave the you know the boundaries of the wall where it needs to be for that i will use a boolean operation a boolean difference to be precise and for to, to make this work actually let me copy this to the side so that um so that it's not in the way and you can uh, so that uh, if i mess something up you we can easily go back here so the first thing that i want to fix is all of these pipes they have openings at the end right so i will select all of them everything and i will cap type in cap so now it's uh, it closed them off, right? So now uh, there's no openings, meaning that I can use the next tool that's called Boolean Union. Boolean Union to actually merge these pipes together, right? So now this is one shape. And I will do this for all of them, Boolean Union. And it's a heavy procedure, so it might take a little bit of time to do. Come on, you can do it. There we go. So now this is a single closed poly surface, right? I can even use some uh, uh, so some 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 cleaning up techniques to make it nicer. But for now, we don't really care. We we just care that it's it's there, right? And it's done. Now <clears throat> I will fish out where my curve is, right? <clears throat> Sorry, and I'll lift it above my structure. I don't care where it actually is, as long as I'm not messing around with X and Y movement, only the Z movement. And I will take the structure, click on this, click and drag on this little ball here to make to make an extrusion downwards. And again, I will cap the extrusion to make it into a box. <clears throat> now we need to cut away everything that is not inside of this box a tool that or a command that does that is called boolean intersection and we i believe the first set uh is this 
And the second set is, so select first set of services, press enter for second set, okay. Enter set, uh, sorry, enter to get the second set. We select the box then, hit enter again. And we just investigate. So what do we have here? Let's keep deleting thing. Ah, there, there it is. <laughs> that was easy. There it is. So we have ourselves uh, a wall. And I believe if I, let's delete this for now. If I do a bounding box on, on this wall and I measure the height, distance, the height is 180 millimeters, which is great, uh, which means that we fit in, in, in the box, right? I, sh I should even, uh, sorry, not in the box, in the, in the height of how much material we have. 180 millimeters. Actually, I do want this to be 200 millimeters. So I will scale 1D, scale one direction, and I'll just choose, uh, let's see, the midpoint. So from here to here, I want to have a hundred millimeters. So just type in a hundred, hit enter. And now this is going to be, you know, the whole edge is going to be 200 while this one is a hundred. Okay. So we have ourselves a wall and I don't need these pipes anymore. So I'll just sell poly surface, select poly surfaces, unselect the wall and delete all of the other ones. Move this back in place or move this neck nearby look at the curves and this is basically you know with these curves we have this wall oh and you probably don't know how it's gonna look like so let me change to arctic view this is how it looks like you know without the uh, without the ugly edges I would say, you know, it, it's fine. It's fine. Nothing, nothing fancy, but it's, it's okay. There are holes here and so on. Okay, that's the Rhino part. Let's load up Grasshopper. Uh, Grasshopper. Let's load it up and I'll show you how I can automate this. But because what if now I want to change the pattern? You know, I don't think that this pattern looks uh, particularly well. I want, for instance, to make the the pipes so to say smaller what do i do then well i'm kind of in a in a pickle then because i would need to remodel the whole thing this is why we do grasshopper scripts right so that any adjustments that should be made can be made painlessly um for some reason, as I'm recording, Grasshopper is taking... Oh, never mind. <laughs> Wanted to start complaining, but didn't have the chance. Let's go back to Shaded View and let's actually work in Grasshopper with this. So I'm going to probably... Let's, let's hide everything and let's create a new layer. Uh, Grasshopper... GH dash input and in that layer I'll create a sub layer called uh, bounding box not bounding box bounding curve and it's going to be this little curve right here change object layer there we go so now it lives here and then I will say um, X direction one more layer x direction and one more layer y direction and for x direction again i like to choose the red color for y direction i like to choose the blue color now let's hide um, construct a and construct b let's uh, probably hide the sweeps delete current layer yes of course let's hide the sweeps and this is what we are dealing with right now. We have the bounding curve. We don't have any curves in X and Y direction. We need to build those. So I will do that still in Rhino. And actually, I'll, 
I could borrow it because we already did it here, but I'm just gonna do it again. It's not gonna take too long. X direction, I'm just gonna grab a NURBS curve and I'm gonna say, okay, this one, let's say this one bends like that. Oh, that's a very intense bend. Bends like that, goes a little bit closer here. Then it does something like, Maybe something like this, and then here it becomes wider. No idea what I'm what I'm doing with these, but you know this is my x direction. Y direction. Can we do? Can we say that in y direction it starts like so? That's a ugly point right there. Let me delete it and instead drag this one. Starts like so. Then it kind of crosses, oops, crosses the pattern like so and ends up. Can it end up actually following the the curvature of the y direction or, or of the x direction something like that this might make an interesting pattern so we're going to use that time to reference stuff well let's do curve component uh, let me do bifocals I focus right here. Let's do a curve component. Uh, actually, let's do three curve components. One for each layer. Curve, curve, curve. Three curve components. Um, so this one, I'm just gonna call it. Let me make a group out of it and just call that group. Um, how do we call it? Can I do it here? No, I can't. Um, this is going to be bounding rectangle. Bounding rectangle. There we go. Then we group this bad boy and we call it X direction curves. And this one group, right click on the group and call it Y direction. Oops y direction curves okay we're we're good with this time to reference things bounding rectangle right click set one curve there's our rectangle we're done with this <laughs> and let's drag it over somewhere here and forget about it for a, for a while x direction is it blue or red ones it's the red ones okay x direction set one or set multiple curves and let's just go from left to right you don't you want to be consistent in direction right so left middle right okay for y direction curves also just choose one direction set uh, multiple so i'll just do bottom one middle one top one like that okay we have that now if you remember from the rhino part we did tween between curves right i'm going to do the same thing here Twin, twin curve. I really hope that this is, yeah, this is in part in curves. Okay, so you do have this. Twin curve asks me for curve A and curve B. Problem: we have three curves. We don't have two, right? So we need to somehow deal with this. I will separate these three curves into separate outputs. So I'll do list item. Like that, I'll connect my list to the list input here, like that, and I will uh, zoom into my list item node and click on this plus sign. And you can see as I click on this plus sign, this is the first item on the list, this is the second item on the list, this is the third item on the list. So now I have all of these three curves separated, right? I will do the same thing for the y direction. Like so. So we have three separated curves here, and I will 
work with them in pairs, right? So one and two, and then two and three, right? So a twin curve will be done. And yes, yes, for those of you who are more advanced in Grasshopper, yes, of course, you can do it without, you know, making this into a big definition by just having all six of them uh, in one list and then doing sort, uh, not sort, sorry, shift list and working with it that way. We don't do that here. <laughs> we make it simple, right? Um, so we have list item, uh, first curve from X axis goes into A, second curve from X axis goes into B, and then for the factor, you can see that it says uh, zero, 0, will be a curve that's created on top of curve A, 1 is going to be a curve that's created on curve B. So what's going on? Let's see. Uh, if I create a, a slider saying 0 0.5 and connect that to the factor, this is the curve that we get. And if I move this curve, I can see that they are they flip around, right? So from here, it flips around here. That's bad. That's not what we want. Especially if I give it two factors, for instance, right? You can see that it's you know, m m starting to mess up and it's intersecting. That's because the direction, the direction of this curve is upwards while this curve is going downwards, right? We want the direction to match. Very easy to do. You just select either one of these and you type in flip and voila, <laughs> it, it, it just works, right? Flip is the command. And now this is this is clean. So instead of just using sliders, I'm just going to generate a series of numbers between zero and one. And for that, I'm going to use a tool that's called range. Range just uh, generates numbers for us. Uh, basically, you specify the minimum and maximum. In this case, it's zero and one. That's perfect for us. And you specify how many steps do you want? How many numbers do you want? Actually, not really. Remember my explanation from previous tutorial about the steps? So a curve has a start and end. And if it has, uh, if you want to divide it into two segments, right? It, how many points will it have? Three, right? If you want to divide it into four segments, it's going to have five points. So here, uh, where it says segments or steps, right? Uh, the numbers generated are going to always be plus one, right? We'll all, you will always have one more number that is generated. So if I do five here, it's going to do one, two, three, four, five, six curves in total, right? Just, just keep in mind that this is plus one. So let's do five for this. And then I'm just going to take the tween curves and this range, by the way, this range can live somewhere here in between. This tween curves starts here, ends here. Let's copy it, copy paste, or let's create a new one. Tween curves, like that. Let's take the second one and the third one and use the same factor. And as you can see, it also messes up, like the curves here are messy. Usually if you see that, that means the direction is wrong. So again, I take this and I flip it around. And now it's fine. Voila. So now we can control the tween with one slider. Let's do that for the second um, range, not range, how do you call it? Like the second, uh, oh my God, set of curves here, that Y direction, right? So actually I'm lazy. So I'm just going to take these three nodes holding down the shift key. I'm not taking the range, or actually let's take the range as well. I'm going to take all of this, Control-C, Control-V, copy-paste, drag it down, 
and connect my Y curves to that, you can see that it's a mess. And I believe all I need to do is just the middle curve. I just need to flip it around. Perfect. <laughs> so we get ourselves a grid by the end of this. All right. So now since we have a grid that we can work with and we can adjust it live, right? This becomes a little bit more flexible. Not, but we do have a bunch of curves all over the place. We need to actually uh, not, not get rid of them, but we need to put them all into one big happy family, <laughs> into one list, right? So I will just use merge. And I just understood that, okay, this is going to be a little bit tricky, but bear with me. Uh, let me hide this and let me hide the blue curves here. Let's just look at the red curves, right? So this tool right here generates nine curves. Let's do less. Let's do like three. Uh, so four curves in total, right? This tool here generates four, cur four curves. This one, right at, cur uh, right at the first curve, second curve, third curve, and right at the fourth curve, right? So it generates four curves. This one also does that. This, 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 and this. Do you see where we have a duplicate curve? I'll, I'll, I'll highlight it here and here, right? These two. There is one curve that is duplicate, that is used by both of these tools. The middle one. We need to get rid of that. That duplication is going to cost us a lot later on if we don't get rid of it. So the way we do it is by just simply removing uh, the, this curve. Not, not, uh, not this particular curve, but the green, you know, the, the, one of the curves from this list. So I'll do removing in Grasshopper is called cull. And I'll use cull index. And if you want to remove the first item from the list, you use cull index zero, right? Because first item in the list is zero. If you want to remove the last item on the list, you use cull index minus one because it wraps back, right? So it, so it removes the last one. So I'm just going to write dash dash minus one like that, connect it to index here. And now always double check, very important to double check if you're removing the correct one. So you can see that now this is not green anymore, meaning that the one that was removed was indeed this one. And it's going to be filled in by this. So it's fine. Okay. Ooh, we need to do the same thing here <laughs> now, right? Because this, this has the same problem. So color index, I'll just copy it, paste it here. And I think this should do the trick. Yeah, it does do the trick. So we're Gucci now. Just a little bit of cleaning up with this procedure. Uh, let's reduce the complexity a bit. Five and five. And now let's connect everything into one big happy family. So I'm just going to connect color index. Then the second set here, just a clean tween curve set like that. Color index again and tween curves again. Four inputs in total. I should probably bring them in here like this. And we have ourselves a merge, which is basically, and let's just right click on the merge output and flatten it. Right click output, flatten. So here we have all of the curves in one list. What do we do with them? Well, we could do the sweep tool. Uh, we could use sweep on them, but I don't think that's maybe, maybe. 
I'm just wondering how to do variable rotations in a in a nice way. So what I want with these curves, let me just grab one of them. What I want each of these curves to do is I want them to have some sort of a offset, let's say 100 to one side, 100 to another side, upwards by 100 as well, and then downwards by, oops, and then downwards by minus 100, something like that, and then we somehow loft oh that's an that's an ugly loft two three four loft uh closed loft and tight not tight uh, straight sections i'm thinking of something like this let me show it to you with arctic view something like this maybe i don't know oh th this one needs to go down but you you get the idea um Let's try. Let's try doing that in Grasshopper. So these curves, and also I want the, uh, them to be variable, which is going to be a little bit more tri tricky. Mm, so I think what we will do is we will say these curves get offsetted to both sides. I really hope that you have this. Let me check if you do. It's under Pufferfish. Did we use Pufferfish? I think we used Pufferfish by now. That's the plugin that we used for tutorial number one. If you don't have Pufferfish, install Pufferfish. And then you will have this offset curve tool where it can be, or maybe offset curve. Plane, corners, distance. Now, let's use the Pufferfish one. It's a nicer one. So, offset curve. We connect the curves to it. Hide them. Or not necessarily hide them. Let's zoom in and let's take a look. So, offset curve. First of all, it asks for a plane. By default, it's set to world x, y. That's fine. Because we're working on the ground. Right? Uh, horizontal distance for offset this is how far away the curves to both sides will be offset from the middle edge so i'm going to give it like 50 millimeters uh, 50 millimeters for now something like that well uh, we can increase or decrease it as much as we want right so we have ourselves an offset then the next one is it asks if it's both sides, but it should be. Oh, right, right. So it asks, would you like to offset it to both sides? Hell yeah. Uh, toggle. Boolean toggle. Double click on it. Set it to true. And connect it to both sides. So now it's actually offsetting it properly to both sides. I'm, I'm looking at this, by the way, because this is just a mess, but this one helps me understand what the hell is going on. So let's do... What's a cool number? Eh, let's not use cool numbers, let's use 50. Um, next one is kinks. We don't care about that one. And cap type, we do care about that one. Uh, the one that we're going to be using is called, what is it called, linear? Uh, no, we, we use none. And if I hover over it, oh, you can't see it, okay. If I hover over it, you can see that none is set to, if we set this to zero, it's, go, it's not going to create these small lines here. We don't need them, so I do set it to zero, connect it like so, voila. It is done. It has been done. Um, so offset curve is successful. I believe that after offsetting, it's going to have way too many control points. We don't need that many. So I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning up. I'll just <clears throat> rebuild. <clears throat> Sorry. I'll rebuild the curve. I'll use rebuild. Wait. 
Is it rebuild? Yes, I'll rebuild the curve. Or, or each curve, right? And I will give it a count. How many points do we want? I'll just show you what happens if I give it two points. Bam. And hide the originals. Wait, that's not logical. It should be, it shouldn't be. Why oh, is it being degree of curve? Uh, control point count if omitted input curve control point uh, count is used. Reserve the intentions of the. Well, sure. It doesn't let me do straight lines. Well, sometimes it does. Or maybe. Yeah, sometimes it does let me do straight lines, sometimes it doesn't, doesn't matter. This is basically how many control points there are on the curve, so I'm going to say 10. 10 points for each curve, don't, don't need more, that, that's enough. We have them rebuilt, we have them cleaned up. Okay, what's next? Next up, we will, we will vary the, the 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 thickness i think of them yeah let's do that let's vary the the thickness of the offsets right because right now they have like uniform thickness it's always uh, 50 millimeters so we, i want to kind of vary them to make them uh, a little bit more narrow a little bit a little bit wider depending on what we uh, what we're dealing with or where we are on this wall so I'm going to create some sort of let's do one more layer and let's call it attractor attractors enter and let's just make this something that we will notice pink color make it active and let's just draw some sort of a curve that goes whoop, 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 whoop. Oof. something like that just a random i don't i don't know what i'm doing type of a curve <laughs> an attractor curve and let's reference it in into somewhere here as an attractor crv right click set one curve group it i'll just call it attractor curve there we go so the closer these um, curves are gonna get to this one the thinner they should become or thicker doesn't matter one way or the other so i'm going to actually i'm going to move how do we do this first of all let's get the control points Oh, so sorry. So this part was just, I didn't even need to do this part. Or maybe I did. Never mind. Let's get the control points of this rebuilt curve. Bam. So you can see all of the control points that we have. Uh, maybe we can have more, actually. Now when I look at this, let's do 20. So 20 control points for each of these. Um, and these control points need to be um, influenced and moved around by this attractor curve. So they need to be squished towards the, or attracted by the attractor curve, right? Or rather than being attracted, they should just expand, perhaps? Yeah, they should just expand. So, um, sorry that I'm blabbing. This is my, I, I'm just trying to record my thought process. I'm now trying to d decide if I want the control points to move towards the curve or if I want the these guys to just expand. If I want them to just expand, I don't really need, um, I don't really need this particular approach. So 
So perhaps, perhaps we can do it this way then. Sorry. You take the rebuild curve and control points, you delete it. You have your offset curve here, like that. And you have your initial curves here, like that. You divide your initial curves by the same number with what we used. We used 20, I believe, right? So you have 20 points here. And you also divide your offsetted curves by 20 into 20 points, like so. Then what you do, uh, what you want is you want this direction, right? So you do, um, I believe, just doing... Kinda. I believe just doing um, vector between two points is going to be enough. But the problem is that we have a pretty ugly data tree now. Tree statistics. Oh, not tree statistics, sorry. Param viewer. Param viewer. We get a pretty, you know, ugly data tree here and a little bit nicer one here. We need these to match. How do you make them match? Well, you need to remove the one of these branches. But the problem is that you can't do that very easily. So I'm just trying to figure out a way. Give me a second. Okay, I, I think I figured it out. We can group these points, make them into one group. We can repeat then, repeat data uh, two times. If this works, I'll repeat, uh, I'll, I'll explain why this works. So we repeat data actually. Let's not hide numbers from the students. We need to repeat data two times. Right? So now all of these points are duplicate here. The reason why I'm duplicating this is because one point will correspond to this, while the other one corresponds to this. Right, and we get ourselves a vector, or maybe I'm just being completely stupid. Let's not do that as well. Let's struggle more. Offset curve, we don't offset it to both sides, we just offset it to one side, right. So toggle false, and now let's do divide curve, 20. Now you can see that with me, it's not always just flowers. <laughs> Sometimes it's, it's pretty hell. And here it's, uh, for some reason, still a data tree. We don't care. We don't need it to be a data tree. So I'm just going to flatten the output here of the offset curve and I promise this is gonna work this is gonna be the one that actually works <laughs> we have ourselves curves here and curves here oh sorry po points along this curve and points along the offsetted curve meaning that I can get a vector a vector two, p two points between the first set and the second set like that and I should probably show it to you right vector display vector display vector angle there's there's the direction that I'm looking at right so that's the direction that I need very important to have it I will hide the offset because I don't care about it. Wait. Other way around. Sorry. Other way around. It needs to... This needs to be A. And this needs to be B. Like that. Perfect. Is it perfect? I can't tell. Like that, like that. And this connects to A. Yeah, there we go. 
much cleaner wires. So it starts at the curve, it, uh, at the initial curve, and it ends at the offset curve point. Okay, so we have the direction in which we will move the affected points by the attractor curve. And now, uh, honestly, all we need to do is pull, pull the affected points onto this curve, right? So we use pull point. Points that we pull are from the initial curve or initial curves here. And geometry that uh, that pulls is the attractor curve, like that. So what we get is we get the closest um, distance to this attractor geometry from those points. And we can use that distance to actually move those points along this vector, right? So we use move. We will be moving these points, right? And we, I'll just delete that for now. And we will be moving them along this vector, but not just yet. We need to use amplitude. So we need to decide by how much, right? So we use amplitude. We connect that to our target, like so. And then, and then, and then, and then, we can use, for instance, distance as our amplitude. So this will mess it up quite dra dramatically, but this is going to be just for me to show you uh, the effect that it has. Right? So how do I even show it to you? Let's, so right now it's, it's all connected, right? So the distance is connected to the amplitude. This is, it, we are measuring the distance between these points to the curve, and we are using that distance as uh, to describe by how much are we moving. And I believe if I now just say interpolate curve, interpolate, not data, just interpolate, connect it, you can see that if now I move that tractor curve, this whole thing kind of changes. That means that the tractor curve has a very very strong influence over the newly distorted curves, the interpolated curves and the points, right? So a direct connection between distance and amplitude is too much. <clears throat> we need to soften it. The way you soften it is by using... Um, how is it called? Uh, number map map uh, remap numbers remap numbers and I really like using graph mapper and remap numbers again right so we connect the distance to our um, value input of remap numbers our source domain is basically the smallest and largest distance that this gives us. So we need to uh, get bounds of this uh, data range, like that. And by the way, since we're plugging in a data tree into bounds, it's not going to give us a single value, it's going to give us multiple. So we need to right-click on the N input and choose to flatten. Connect that to the source. Now connect the range or the result into the graph mapper. Uh, stuff from the graph mapper comes into the remap number values again, and that gets spit out back into the amplitude. So we created, initially we just created these four nodes here <clears throat> in between the distances and the amplitude. What do they do? Okay, first node, remap numbers it basically takes all of the distances it finds where uh, which distance is the smallest and which is the highest and it compresses all of those numbers to fit in between 0 and 1 right let's say you have a re like multiple distances and the highest one is 5000 5000 the smallest one is 0 and when you compress it, the 5,000 will become 1 and 0 will stay as 0, right? Because it gets compressed. And then um, 
2500 will become 0 0.5 for instance right so this is what it does graph map mapper uh, we right click on it we go to graph types and we choose bezier it it's very hard to explain what it does i'll show you visually uh, afterwards but just let's put a pin in this one I'll, I'll show you visually once i can actually show you visually the thing is the important thing to note is that from graph mapper in numbers that come out are still in between zero and one and we want to convert them back into millimeters for movement right so we need to specify here our tar target uh, values so I'll double click and I'll type type in construct domain construct domain for our target just like that and then our a input is going to be um, so if something is super close to the curve it should move away by move away from the initial axis by uh, let's say five centimeters or even less one centimeter 10 millimeters like that and if something is very far away from the curve it should move by a hundred millimeters so become really a thick boy and now technically does this work by the way yeah it does okay so you can see that the, the the further wait something something something's fishy something is indeed fishy uh that's fine 21 values for 21 branches Maybe it's just me. What if we change up this? This does absolutely nothing. Why? We investigate. Almost. Yeah, so all of these numbers are very... Oh, so you know what's important? It's important to connect the correct things to the, uh, to the correct nodes. So here, instead of points, I've connected tangent. That's why it doesn't work. Instead, I need to connect my points to pull point command. And now it's going to work. Um, or not. What the hell is going on? Oh, this needs to be a small number. Now this is going to work. So you can see that now I can control how much it expands and contracts. Whew. Okay, let's have a break. Uh, I'll, I'll stop the video here and pick it up from where we've, we've left. Okay then, so where were we? We have ourselves some moving parts now and we have ourselves actually a pretty decent interpolated curve so one very important note is that we are only this is the original right these are the original curves and these are the ones that were that are being moved away and why the hell is this crossing here now What's going on? Uh, let's see. Here, here. Everything seems fine. It's just for some reason it starts crossing there. How does the offset look like then? Oh, sorry. That's the offset. That is the offset. This, these are our initial curves. Okay, that was my bad. And we're basically taking them and we are creating a variable offset curve right along them. 
Okay. Whew. How do we create this variable offset to the opposite side, to here? Glad you asked. Very simple. We take the vector, we reverse the vector, reverse list, we reverse the vector, and we move the points again, copy paste. Only this time we do that uh, not with the original amplitude vector output, but with the reversed. Wait, sorry, that's the reverse list. My bad. Reverse this one, reverse vector. Bam goes into tar tangent bam okay we are getting there we're gucci let's hide literally everything because this is such a noisy image let's hide the the spine you know the middle curves here so only these uh, these two nodes are being displayed right now and let's what do we do let's loft between them loft this connects here, this connects here. This is how they look like. And now, finally, you can start seeing the effect. Let's look at it in the top view. So this is the effect that the attractor curve has on uh, these offsets. And as you can see, the closer we are to the attractor curve, the thinner the offsets become. And I can control that with this gradient. Right? So this graph mapper is literally a gradient. This is why I wanted to show it to you visually rather than explain it um, through words. Okay, so we have this control over it. Let's amp up the thickness a bit. Ramp down the width here, or maybe... Yeah, something like that. Maybe we can even go back all the way here and increase the amount. Uh, let's do six. Six. Yeah, something like that. Okay, and now let's continue working on this um, in 3D, right? So what kind of cross-section do I want? Glad you asked. The cross-section that I want is gonna be whoop 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 something like that uh yeah I, I'm, I'm drawing with mouse is not nice right now i have this curve right here this curve right here and the curve going right through the middle so this is like a cross section right so um i need i need i need i need How do we do this goddamn loft? Yeah, we can loft, right? So I need a point here, and I need a point, uh, or not a point, a curve here. So basically, I just need to move, move, move this one up and down. And I don't think we will be using any, uh, whatchamacallit, We will not be using any uh, variable. Uh, we will, the height of the shapes will not vary, just the width, right? So I'll just take these curves that I have here. Let me just create a curve component. This is gonna be a long wire, so might as well clean it up this way. Curve, another one, curve. These components don't do anything, they just kinda help me they just contain data and also help me in cleaning up the stuff let's delete the loft for a bit so this is like these are the middle ones uh left right ones All right middle left right so the middle one needs to move needs to move in z direction by a hundred millimeters right like that and then uh, all of these curves need to be separated into de separate data tree branches so I will just right click and choose to graft the reason why I'm doing it 
is because here and here they are already separated into data tree branches and I want the data trees to be the same. So I'm grafting this. Then I'm going to merge and I'm going to decide how do we loft. So we start the loft from this curve then it goes until here, until this curve, and then it reaches the top, right? So it's going to be like a um, L-shaped loft. Let's do it. Starts from here. That goes into merge. Goes until the middle one. That goes into merge. Oh, and that needs to be grafted. Sorry. So instead of grafting here, let's not. Let's remove the graft. We will be grafting this one. So the dashed line comes in here. And also it ends at here, at the top one. Whew. Okay, so we have these three inputs. We have three curves here. And let's loft them. Bam. And this is how it looks like. Not bad, but also not good. Uh, so we need to actually change the flavor of the loft. I will change it by doing boolean, not boolean, uh, options, by, by doing options, loft options, like that, and choosing a loft type to be loose. So that is, if I plug in number one here, it's gonna use loft type set to be loose. Bam. So now this only works like the central uh, curve only works like a attractor, let's say, as a control point curve, right? So we have one side of the loft. Okay, we will need to repeat it for the other side. Copy paste. Another one like that. And actually, let's just create another merge. And let's just see. So we start here, right, with this curve. Then we go to the middle again. And then we go to the top again. Perfect. And we, ah, let's create another loft with the same loft options and connect it. Okay, we have ourselves a ridge. Congratulations. <laughs> Successful. Okay. So we made this. And actually, I don't really like the way the, the... I don't like the sharpness of it. But I do think that it's going to look nice once we simulate how it would look like carved out. So I, would, I will allow it. If I had more time, I would offset the top ridge, I would kind of fill in the gap, and it would be a little... Or maybe let's do that. I, I want to teach you how to do that either way, so might as well. We have our moved curve here, uh, which I will offset. Or do we... No, let's not waste time. Let's not waste time, sorry. It's going to take a little bit of time and I don't want to waste it. Let's hide everything, literally everything, except for these two. Let's brep join. Let's join them up, holding down the shift key. Bam, bam. Disable preview. Let's mirror. Mirror this brep along x, y plane, world x, y plane, so that it goes down. And what else? Oh yeah, we need to brep join again. brep join, bam, bam. Okay, so this is the, the end result that, that we have. Our little form Ooh, what a day next up next up we need to cap 
the holes, right? So we cap. Bam, this is capped now. We need to get rid of the data structure. We don't care about the data structure anymore. So I will... Actually, capping holes takes a long time. Ah, whatever. I will flatten this. And here we have 26 separate B reps, right? Corresponding to 26 separate curves. Okay, we have that. This whole definition, right? Now, I will show you how to do one little trick. And that trick is called data dam. What the data dam does, and I always like to, when I do a data dam, I always like to do this scribble. Whoop. Whoop. Just mark it out so that you can easily find it where it is. Data dam doesn't let information through. Uh, through as long as you don't press the play button right so now if i check there are no b reps if i press the play button there are b reps now if i go uh here and change something i don't know what to change let's change uh, let's change this to a smaller number let's make it skinny see this is now uh skinnier or Let's make it even skinnier. There we go. It's even skinnier. But if I check what comes out from here with a BREP component, bam. These are still fat. That's because the data dam didn't update. So I'll press the play button and now the data dam updates. That's how it works. Um, let's actually make it where were we we did like 50 and 100 right something like that 50 100 good enough press play to update and now we have a beer up here why do we use a data dam we use a data dam uh, before we will start using heavy tools by heavy tools, I mean tools that take more than a second to calculate, because here I want uh, to keep changing the values as much as, you know, just as I please, and I don't want to wait every time I change the value. So the data dam kind of stops it from crashing. Let's say it like that. Uh, the drawback is that I will need to press the play button every time. So now we have B reps here. I will use solid union to merge them together into one shape and we wait <laughs> and it doesn't work huh of course it doesn't why should it yeah so this is where uh, grasshopper starts becoming a little bit uh, a little bit hard to work with it's when the, 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 the unions stop, stop working. Because in Rhino, I could investigate and see what's up and what's wrong. In Grasshopper, I can't. Right? So let's actually, where is our, remember the bounding re uh, rectangle? Let's bring it back. Let's bring it back to here. Bounding rectangle. And let's see if we can actually cut away uh, these B reps with the bounding rectangle. So first, I will need to create a box. So I'll do a planner um, surface. No, sorry, it's called boundary surface from this rectangle. So now it's it becomes a surface. I will extrude it. And actually, I'll extrude it up by, like, in Z axis. So I type in Z by, like, a meter. So a thousand millimeters. And also, I will move it. I will move it down. So that's going to be, again, Z, only that is going to be negative. By 500 millimeters. Right? So by half of this. <clears throat> I move it down. 
Let's just clean it up a bit. There we go. And now I will take this box that I have created and I'll try to do solid difference from these B reps with this box. Let's see if that's going to work. So that seems to be working, only that I think, yeah, oops. <laughs> That's not what I want. I want a, an opposite result to this. So instead of solid difference, I will use solid intersection between the B reps and this box. Bam. There we go. So these are still separate, right? But at least now they are trimmed away by the uh, with the box and i can still kind of try a boolean union uh, or or sorry solid union i can still try using solid union on them but i don't think if it, it sometimes works sometimes doesn't now nah, it doesn't it, it just gives you an error okay that's fine we will do that in rhino so I will just take it, bake it out, bake it out as, uh, bake it out into the default layer. There we go. Hide it. This is how it looks like. Uh, select the objects here. Boolean union. Wait for it to do its magic. If it's not going to work, yeah, you can see Boolean union field. That's fine. Um, it says that it, 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 blah, blah. it will even show me where it failed, uh, which doesn't really help me. So what I'm going to do is I will sell polysurface, right? Select polysurface, isolate so that only these are visible. And I'll work with them one by one boolean union from this this and this these three will you work yes you work okay good then you guys and you two and i'll just go through all of it until it it will stop working and then i'll see you know what what, what needs to be done to actually make it work yeah there we go so uh boolean union failed huh Okay, let's see if here, here, here. That's fine. And then here, here. Are you the culprit? No, you're not. So which guy is the culprit? You, you, and you. Are you fine? William Union, come on. Okay, Boolean Union failed, so I have one more error here. Let's try these. Okay, so it's failing. So if it's failing, try just try moving it a little bit to the left and a little bit to the to the right. Just a tiny bit. Because some tolerances might be messing you up. Boolean Union again, try it again. Again, failed. God damn it. What about you? Oh, this one worked. Okay, so this one is still still the failure. So I'm going to keep trying to move it around. Come on. Failed. Okay, sure. I will keep, uh, I will connect other stuff to it and then come back to this uh, later. Boolean union. This, 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 and this. Should be fine. Yes. Now, this, 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 this. Let's try. Not sure if it's going to work, but we can damn well try. Yeah, there we go. It, it, it does work. And then these guys. Come on. I believe in you. There we go. So... We still have some trash here and here, and is there anything else? 
What the hell are you? The smallest closed poly service I've ever seen. Delete. Okay, we have that, and this is the last element that we are having trouble in connecting. So I'm just going to move it by a lot <laughs> rather than a little, right? So there is a little bit of um, manual work involved, but hopefully it's worth it by the end of this. Said that, everything else is controlled through numbers. Boolean union field, come on. Everything is controlled by numbers, so I think... Come on. So I think we are still saving time in terms of adjustments, adjusting the, the wall. This thing doesn't let me go, huh? Okay. Worst case scenario, we move it up slightly. Control shift to take the bottom edge and move that edge down like that. Please don't break. I don't think it broke. Okay. Control shift to take the top edge, move vertical. From this point to this point. So now we have this kind of a floating guy, one that is much more prominent than the others. Maybe that's fine. Boolean union, please, please work. I'm just giving it, giving it time I swear to god if this is not going to work I'm just going to delete it I'm just going to delete that element yeah failed okay sure go away didn't want that element here uh, either way so <laughs> so we have this uh, this kind of a shape uh, view not view capture to, to file sorry uh, merge all coplanar faces will clean it up a little bit. We'll make it a little bit nicer. And now let's take a look at, at it through the Arctic view. Voila. This is the, this is a wall, I guess. So we successfully have made a script for um for a wall this is a crappy acoustic wall <laughs> because it's full of holes everywhere so of course i would need to reinvestigate and and see how it can be uh, adjusted but this is a wall next up i am going to simulate carving on every element of this wall but i think that's gonna be a little bit a little bit later because right now uh, we are already way past one hour of tutorial time. So that's enough for, for today. That is how... Wait, I need to show both of these. That is how you create a wall in Rhino and how you can create a wall of this kind of parametric wall in Grasshopper. And also in Grasshopper, you can just mess around with the sliders to make it nicer or <laughs> worse. That's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.